Porridge arrived in the East African nation of Tanzania today and it received a peaceful reception. Chinese Olympic officials handed the torch off to the mayor of Dar es Salaam. About a dozen riot police surrounded him as he carried it to a bus. Thousands of protesters angry about China's human rights record have demonstrated as the torch has made its way around the world. But no protests are expected in Tanzania. The man the Chinese government blames for the, a lot of the unrest in recent weeks was at a conference in Seattle today. Tens of thousands of people came to see the Dalai Lama. He did say a little bit about Tibet, and as Chris Brown reports, he also had a few things to say about the U.S., Iraq, and Afghanistan. A procession of color and cultures filled the Seattle football stadium today as the city saluted the Dalai Lama on the second day of his visit. With the ongoing violence in his homeland of Tibet as a backdrop, the leader of some 20 million Tibetan Buddhists is in the United States to speak about compassion. In his discussion so far, he has urged more women to assume roles of political leadership and said dialogue is the only way to solve political disputes. It's been an amazing week. Uh, Lobsang Hekchok of Calgary is a Canadian born in Tibet who first went to San Francisco to join the protest over Beijing's Olympic torch relay. Now he's here for inspiration from the Dalai Lama. He is everything to a Tibetan and uh, he can uh, transcend national boundaries and uh, from different races. During his public discussions here, the Dalai Lama has not directly referred to the troubles in Tibet or to accusations by China that he's responsible for inciting resistance to Chinese rule. Whatever you call me, uh, people call me, uh, I'm still a human being. The Chinese president made his first statements today since the March violence in Tibet. Hu Jintao, seen here meeting with Taiwanese officials, was later quoted by China's official news agency as dismissing suggestions the Tibet conflict is about human rights, and instead, he says, it is about safeguarding national unification. In an interview with NBC News, though, the Dalai Lama insisted, as he has often in the past, that he wants greater autonomy for Tibet, not an independent country. Not seeking separation. Her main point is to the Chinese public, we are not against you. And he had this veiled criticism of the U.S. No. government. Even the United States, superpower, <laughs> you, too much using violence or force, not very successful. <laughs> In Iraq and Afghanistan, not very successful. While the official topic of the Dalai Lama's visit is compassion, it's clear many people simply want to be near a man they consider to be one of the most inspirational figures in the world. And here today is the largest crowd of his trip, some 55,000 people looking to make that connection. Chris Brown, CBC News, Seattle. The pros and cons of protests are being discussed today in Calgary by athletes who have certainly seen plenty of Olympic Games come and go. Cameron McIntosh reports on that. 60 years ago this year on the outdoor ice of St. Moritz, Switzerland, Barbara Ann Scott became the first and is still the only Canadian woman to win an individual Olympic gold in figure skating. Well, I am completely overcome to receive this award. Today, being honoured for a lifetime of Olympic dedication, Scott says no Canadian athlete should be denied a similar opportunity by boycotting the Beijing Olympics. This is a, a sports game and it should not be politicized, to give the athletes every opportunity to do their thing. But a boycott is what many around the world are calling for. So far, disrupting the Olympic torch run has almost become a sport in itself. It saddens me and it angers me to a certain point. Uh, you know, in our dream world, we wouldn't have politics part of sport, but welcome to reality. From Hitler's opening remarks at the 1936 Games, the American Black Power salute in Mexico,